Welcome back to Silent Hill 3. We've just arrived at Silent Hill in the last episode. The detective went off to meet someone named Leonard, which Vincent told them to meet, or told us to meet, but the detective is the one going to do it. And we went off to check out the hospital, Brookhaven. So just a note, um, in the last episode, I was wondering where exactly we were in relation to the first game. Like on the map, we are staying at an inn, and I was thinking this might be the inn from the original game. But I actually took screenshots of the map in Silent Hill 3 for this place, and then also actually all of the maps for the original Silent Hill, and I compare them looking for, you know, commonalities, uh, street names that were the same, anything like that. And I think this is actually definitely not the place that we were at, um, like on the the waterfront in the original Silent Hill. It's not that place. It's not any of the maps, actually. None of the street names on this map here in Silent Hill 3 are on any of the maps in the original Silent Hill. So, uh, I mean, it's been 17 years since the events of the original game, so I'm sure the town has probably changed a little bit, but I don't think they bulldozed the entire town <laughs> and changed everything. So most likely I'm simply at a completely different area of Silent Hill that we never visited in the original, I guess. I don't actually know how big Silent Hill is. I know it's not a huge town, without a doubt, but maybe it's big enough or, or maybe it's grown big enough in the 17 intervening years that this is an entirely new area. All right, check out Brookhaven with my katana and a bunch of very creepy nurses. Also, I want to point something out. Look at this down here. I think what it is supposed to be is probably a vent of some sort. However, I want to pitch you on an alternative explanation. What if that's a tiny, tiny chalkboard and that thing right there is a little piece of chalk? I'm not wrong, am I? It looks like a little chalkboard. There's another one over there, too. They're all over the place. Alright, I really want a map of this place, but I don't have one. Bunch of different types of medicine, none of it looks useful. I think I already explored this room before I ended the episode and saved. Yeah, um... Let's go back out here, actually. I just want to get my bearings some more. Is that a map? It kind of vaguely looks like a map, but that's an actual chalkboard? No, that's not a chalkboard. Just like poster board thing. <laughs> information. Then it looks like 20 years of just random notices that have become glued to the thing have just been ripped off and it's rusted and stuff. Okay, wow, there's a lot to this hospital. Uh, guess I'll continue this way. Okay, guess I'll uh, continue back out this way. These doors seem awfully narrow, don't they? They feel slightly narrower than doors normally are. There must have been kids here, too, then. I played with dolls like this when I was a child, too. It really takes me back. I 
This day has finally come. That's right. The day when you and I will meet. I was always thinking of you, here in this gloomy cell. I never even knew your name or face until today. But now I know. I know you're the one I've been waiting for. And haven't you been waiting for me, too? That's why you came to rescue me. Oh, how I love you, Heather. Ugh. I want to give you my prized doll I made to commemorate our meeting, the start of this everlasting love. Oh, I can already see your smiling face. Stanley Coleman? Who the hell are you? Can I take the doll? Disgusting. I won't touch that with a ten-foot pole. Yeah. Picture of a flower in a vase. Nice, but whatever. <laughs> the tile just ends here, on the floor. And then it's just, like, concrete. Whoa! The elevator actually works? I did not expect that. Okay, well, we're not done with this floor. Uh, four different levels. In that seems really similar to the Algamilla Hospital. In that one, at least normally, when there wasn't some weird magical fourth floor that didn't actually exist, it also was three main floors and a basement. Hmm. Little break room? Kitchenette? There's a memo posted on the fridge. Food only, do not store drugs. I wonder if it's okay to store health drinks in here. Ooh, health drink. Nothing of interest on top of the desk. Stuff written on the whiteboard, none of it really matters to me. Right, came from here, going this way. Getting turned around, everything looks the same in here. Okay, and then we're back to the beginning. So either the elevator, or I didn't check back here. I also didn't check at the place where the dials disappear. Whole hallway's been barricaded. Oh, that one's locked, so might be unlockable. Hmm. Ow. Ew. 
Ugh. Fuck, the way they move, get out of the way. The way they twist when you hit them, too. With the sword. Ooh, I'm pretty deep yellow. Um, let's use a med kit. I just want to check and make sure that this door doesn't open. Yeah, I figured it wouldn't. Where's that damn map? I need a map, please. I hope I haven't missed it. C1. this place. No point in staying here. That's a real bad place. Uh, fuck, I'm super hurt again. <laughs> they give you an ampule and I probably have to outright use it. Um, after yellow, do you go to red? I've never actually been below yellow. Like, I'm wondering if I should use an ampule now or if this is not the worst health I can have. Um, my controller is vibrating, but it's vibrated more before, so this isn't the worst I could be hurt. Let's use a medkit. Yeah, I was gonna pull out my shotgun, but then I was like, wait, no, it's not worth it. Is that a bunch of stuff glued to the wall? Ah, another doll. What, Stanley? The organization has me shut up in here. They mean to break my will to make me forget about all that. But I'll stay sane even if they throw me in here with lunatics. How about if I stick this to the wall? That would be worthless. You can peel it off, can't you? With that junk those nasty wenches won't stop using? Wait, that would be worthless. Why would you stick stuff to the wall if that would be worthless? Uh, okay, but anyway, apparently I can, I guess, dissolve the glue with something that I'll find in this place. If a thing has no meaning, there's no reason for it to exist at all, just as you exist for me. But why haven't you taken my doll with you? Ah, my gift must have embarrassed you. How cute you are, Heather. Stanley Coleman, fuck off. Also, the fact that they know that I didn't take the doll when I just read that other note and went into that other room with the other doll like five minutes ago is... A little bit disturbing. Lots of things stuck to the wall. A cookie, a toothbrush, a spoon, a Christmas card, a clock. Whoever it was probably used glue, but why do this in the first place? That's a key. And also, is that... That's a big beetle. Key glue to the wall. I'd love to take it with me, but it's really stuck tight. I can't even pull it off. Oh, Dad's notebook. I didn't realize that was an actual item. Yeah, uh... Heather never opened that during any of the cutscenes. Let's read that. Simple works to my dear daughter. I hope this will never come to any use. Maybe it's better if you never know. More than anything else, I fear the possibility of your going away far from me. 
but sometimes we have to tell the truth. That's why I'm writing this, before I'm lost in death and oblivion. Gee, Harry. What happened back then? That has something to do with who you are. It all started 24 years ago. Coming back from a vacation, my wife and I found a baby on the side of the highway. Since we were childless, we thanked God for letting us meet this child, this girl. We took her home. Three years later, my wife died, and another four years later, 17 years ago, I came to Silent Hill. I heard the girl's pleas and took her with me, not knowing why she wanted us to go there. Okay, so that's why they came to Silent Hill. Right, like we knew that Cheryl was being summoned by, I I think it was Dahlia Gillespie? I think the Wikipedia article that I read at the end of my playthrough of the first game, I think it said like Dahlia Gillespie cast a spell to summon Cheryl back because they wanted to reunite the the two pieces of Anessa's soul so that they could birth the demon or something. Um, but yeah, apparently it was the little girl that actually like pleaded with Harry to take me to Silent Hill. So, so Cheryl fell to the, the spell or whatever, the, the draw of the place, and convinced Harry to take them there. And it was there that the girl went away. Not that she actually went anywhere, nor did she die returned to her original self. That's what Dahlia Gillespie said. Original self. That was the young woman burned by her mother as a sacrifice to God. Alessa Gillespie. Half her soul escaped in those flames and went on to live in a baby. In that girl of mine. Of ours. Seven years passed before that half a girl returned to Silent Hill and made Alessa whole again. Newly strengthened, she vowed to kill God. Yeah, I mean, big mood. God, a fetus nestled into this sacrificial girl's womb, was summoned with the usual rites. <laughs> the usual rites, you know, just the one we're all taught in school to summon a God. This was Alessa's wish, no matter what the outcome, even if her own existence were at stake. But that wish was not granted. My interruption meant she prayed instead for the girl's return. I alone couldn't bring her back. Dahlia did it. I only helped at the birthing ceremony to bring God out of Alessa. The newly born God wailed once and was dead. All from that girl's, and probably Alessa's, conscious resistance. That's not the end. After God had vanished in a glow of light, Alessa reappeared and gave me a baby. She looked a lot like that girl so long ago. And then Alessa was gone, dead. There was nothing I could have done to help. I simply clutched the baby to my chest and ran off. The whole thing felt like a dream, but I had proof that it wasn't. The girl was nowhere to be found. And in my arms, the baby. Now 17 years have passed. It feels like only yesterday. And again, it feels like a million years ago. I confess I had reservations first about, at first about raising that baby. Could I love her? Her existence was thoroughly unexplainable. I thought she could be that young woman who snatched away my beloved daughter. That led to sadness, anger. There were times when I put my hands around her tiny little throat. Ooh. Several times I even considered abandoning her. That's what a terrible person I am. But I decided to raise her after all. I just couldn't seem to let her go. When she... When you look at me, you laugh so... You laugh so... So? Not sure, how to, <laughs> not sure what tone of voice I should have there. Um, even now, I can't forget about that girl. But I love you. I have no doubts about that. That's all I ask you to believe. To my precious daughter, Harry Mason. 
Whoa, what the fuck? What's up with my status image? I think that's a bug, right? <laughs> it looks like a bug. If not, then I'm a little bit scared. Yeah, just a bug. Does that happen every time I go in to read this? Yeah, it's repeatable. Weird. Alright, this elevator doesn't work. Um, I think it's elevator time. I feel like I should have a map by now, though. There's too many damn doors, you know? Let me just take a quick look around this place before I go to the elevator. Aha! I did miss them. Thank God that I looked. Brookhaven Hospital, first floor. Hospital map. Yeah, it was on the table right here in the room where you save. Wasn't super obvious. I'm glad I just kind of mashed and tried to use it. Right, so it looks like I have been everywhere here. Oh, and it looks like this locked door right here. Looks like it leads to a stairwell. Alright, yeah, let's go up to... Or, or maybe down if I go to the basement. Let's go to the elevator. What do you bet the basement's the only thing that works? Let's try it. Oh, thank god it doesn't. Second floor. I wonder if this is the hospital that you end up in Silent Hill 2 at. I know I haven't played that, but I've seen it a bit, and... I don't know, this vaguely reminds me of it, but I don't know if it actually was Brookhaven. Another doll. What, Stanley? You may not yet have realized your own true feelings, but you sense them unconsciously. And so you're trying to get closer to me. That's a virtue, the path to paradise. If the door is locked, open it. Use the password for the prison gates. Doctor... I've forgotten his name. Um, anyway, that quack has it posted. He should be here, too. I mean, four numbers would have been good enough, but he kept on going. Isn't it a shame? I'm not there. Aren't you irritated? I long for you, but you're so cruel. Still, I want you, Heather. There's a typewritten memo posted here. What's this supposed to mean? The first is larger than the second. The second twice the third. The third smaller than the fourth. The fourth is half the first.
Well, that's a riddle. Let me take a picture of that. Oh, it goes on. Four of the numbers are not repeated. Three are not in the top row. Two are not in the right row. One of the numbers is the final key. Okay. I will puzzle that out later. Is it for here? Because that's got to be like a keypad, right? Yeah, it is for here. Hmm. Well, I should probably figure it out right now, huh? I was going to try to solve this on a piece of paper, but you know what? Let, let me see if I can do it more interactively in a way that you can actually see in MS Paint. So, behind this you can see the keypad. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's how it's laid out. Four numbers would have been good enough, but he kept on going, so it's more than four numbers for the code. Okay, so parsing this out a bit. Part of the riddle says four of the numbers are not repeated, so four of them are unique. Three are not in the top row. Three of them are not up here, which means that they must be down here. That's what I've covered in red. Uh, it goes on to say two are not in the right row. Now, I think that's incorrect. I think it means to say right column because there is no such thing as a right row. Right, your row is left to right. So like this is a row, this is the top row, this is the middle row, this is the bottom row. And if they're talking about this, then this would be the rightmost column. So I think that's what they're talking about. Two are not in the right row. Assuming they're talking about this, which I'm pretty sure they are, then that means two of them are in this blue box here. So two are there. It's... What? It's unlocked? I must have misunderstood something about this puzzle. Um, so this turned out to be the solution right here, 8634. I thought it was 86343, but I just entered, I think, the first four and that solved it? I don't understand, though, because that seems to go against what it said here. Here it says, I mean, four numbers would have been good enough, but he kept on going. Doesn't that imply that they used more than four numbers, which is why I just assumed it would be one more, five numbers? Yeah, so I started thinking that when it says one of the numbers is the final key, because originally I thought that meant the final key on the keypad, nine. But then I started thinking, I'm pretty sure it's talking about the keys you've already entered, so I'm thinking it's saying the very last number, what I thought was the fifth, should be one of the keys that you've already entered. Because if you make sure that the first four are unique, then this last one can be a repeat and that should be fine, as long as it doesn't violate any of these rules. Okay, I think they definitely should have uh, defined the parameters of this puzzle a little bit better. So here's how I figured it out. It looks like there's a ton of combinations, but there really aren't once you look at all the different constraints. And it's pretty easy to el eliminate the vast majority of them. Like, one of the things I did to eliminate many of them is I figured that um, not only the rule that it gives me explicitly where it says that the first is greater than the second, it gives you that, but then I also figured that because of the other rules, the first must be an even number because the fourth is half of the first. You can't have half of one, not with this number pad, so the first number must be at least two. And also, I don't think they're going to make you round the number, so I'm figuring the first number is at least two and also even. So that already limits you quite a bit. So when I'm writing out passwords, I can go, okay, well, let's start with two. And if this is two, we know that the fourth one is half of that, so it'd be one. And then we know that the second is two times the third. So if we just like pick, let's say the third is one. Well, if the second is two times the third, then it's two. We can eliminate that right off the bat because all four of these need to be unique. So that's like, okay, no. So the third one could be two, and then this is two times that, not unique. Three, two times that, and you go, okay, but then the first has to be greater than the second. The first is smaller than second, so we can eliminate that. And if we make this number any bigger, the second number is only gonna get bigger, which means it's still gonna be wrong. So we gotta change the first number up to four, and then so on and so forth. 
So it's actually not too bad. And I could have solved this a lot quicker if I knew the proper parameters of the freaking puzzle. Anyway, this might be a sort of short episode, but I certainly spent a lot of time behind the scenes trying to solve that puzzle fruitlessly. So I think I'm going to end this here. I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to go through the locked door. Although I think first we're going to go back and check out these other doors that I haven't tried, and then go through the door that I just unlocked.